Payments are one of the biggest things this cycle, and there are two cryptos that are said to revolutionize them, but in two completely different ways. And the battle is between XRP, Ripple, and Coin Network, Kwai, and Chi. Coin Network is said to replace the banking system completely, and it does that by having two tokens. So one token would be for saving, that is the Kwai token, and the Chi token, that is the second one, is for spending. It is also called the energy dollar and it is a crypto native alternative to stable coins. And the whole idea of it is to be a cash-like uh, private coin in a way. It's not fully private like Monero, but it offers cash-like privacy and um, the same kind of, uh, you know, denominations like banknotes have denominations. Chi also has denominations like that. It completes the financial ecosystem that allows you not to rely on USD peg that's outside of the network. So technically you could put the whole world on this and it could function. It would not need any reliance on gold, USD or any other external assets. Ripple, on the other hand, is completely different. It needs all those external assets to exist. It relies on the existence of banks and all the currencies around the world. So Ripple wants to work alongside banks. It wants to be the payment rails for banks. So it wants to be the tokenization uh, uh, partner of choice. It wants to have CBDCs on it. And the whole idea of it to be cross-border payments I bet it is used somewhat for that, but the whole idea of Ripple as well is that um, it's more than that and it wants to expand its ecosystem. Um, however, the tokenomics and the approaches in the technical aspects are very different. Let's actually talk about these technical aspects. Coin Network achieves uh, over 255 a thousand transactions per second. There is a lot of uh, technical thought and uh, several white papers that have been published on the technology. And uh, the whole idea of why it's uh, the only proof of work blockchain that is EVM compatible and as scalable as Quai Network is. Ripple, on the other hand, does not go as hard on the transaction speed. It goes about uh, 1500 TPS, which is also significant and enough for current crypto needs. It may need to be expanded in the future. We'll see how that works out. And both networks have very low transaction fees. Coin Network has about one penny and Ripple is also very low. It's about 0.02 cents. So both blockchains are very fast. Coin Network may be more scalable to higher amount of TPS. Ripple may be less. However, Ripple may have lower transaction fees than Kwai. And as for block times, they both have uh, block times about five seconds. So both are really, I mean, easy to use. Now let's actually get a bit deeper into the consensus mechanisms behind these networks because that's kind of the heart of each blockchain. So as I mentioned, Coin Network is proof of work based. It uses a novel consensus mechanism called proof of entropy minima, and it is a so-called deterministic consensus. If you don't know what it means, it basically means a bit more efficient. And when uh, two blocks arrive at the same time, let's say multiple miners are mining and two miners produce a block at the same time, Usually in regular proof of work, you have to wait until the third miner comes up and decides to continue building on one of those chains. In proof of entropy minima, you don't need to wait for the third person to come in and uh, to continue building on uh, those chains. You just know straight away which block is correct because there is always a bit more work is put into uh, one block than into the other. I will leave all the links to the docs for both Ripple and Coin Network so you can read for yourself more about it. And another feature that's different from regular proof of work in Coin Network is the work shares. Work shares allow smaller miners to participate. So that means they don't have to find a, a whole block and they can only find a part of block and contribute work to it and still receive rewards for mining. And usually in like Caspa or Bitcoin, you have to find a whole block and that requires a lot of computational resource and power. And that means that more users have to either have a lot of ASICs in the first place or join a mining pool. So work shares tend to introduce more decentralization into the system. So overall, POEM is kind of proof of work, but it's more efficient version of it. And therefore it's also more energy efficient and when you combine it with higher TPS of like 255k, and uh, that would be a very low amount of energy spent per transaction. So technically it's more sustainable, more green, if you were to just compare it to Bitcoin or other proof of work networks with lower throughputs. And now let's compare this work-based consensus of Quai Network to Ripple's. Ripple or XRP Ledger has federated consensus model. It is called uh, 
Ripple protocol consensus algorithm. So interesting, it's actually an algorithm or mechanism. Hmm, I don't know. I would think that's a mechanism. An algorithm is something that you run by yourself. A mechanism is like it involves like interactions between people and it could even include incentives and all of that. Instead of miners, you have just regular validators that all run a node for Ripple. And there is a curated list of uh, unique node lists. That's exactly the proper name for it. So there is technically anybody can create it and any validator can create it. But there is also a default one that is curated by the XRPL or XRP Ledger Foundation. And I mean, you can decide for yourself how different uh, Ripple Labs is different from XRPL Foundation. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. But either way, this default node list of trusted nodes is created by the foundation and most nodes agree to have that list. Currently, the default node list is actually only 35 nodes and then at least 80% of the nodes in that list have to agree. So if let's say 25% disagree, so there's only 75% agreement, the consensus literally pauses, which is a very um, interesting design. <laughs> I know many people love Ripple, love XRP, especially considering its price action. And there is a whole army. I expect like a bunch of bots under this video to be like, XRP is the best. But uh, I don't want to sh throw any shade on it. And as long as people love it, I have no problem. You love what you love. I'm just saying that if you compare the decentralization standard to Bitcoin, it really is far away from that. Uh, but if you consider decentralization just with the fact that there are separate machines uh, that are kind of distributed all over uh, that contribute to the consensus mechanism, and at least 35 of them is enough, then you're kind of good. Then you can continue uh, calling it decentralized. But it is very different kind of decentralization than what Bitcoin has and what other proof of work networks like Coin Network have. So Coin Network uh, in here it's novel, so it would benefit from uh, you know higher, a longer time in the market, and higher hash rate of the on the network total. I think currently it's about one tera hash. Um, but overall, the proof of work, in my opinion, you don't have to agree, is a, a more decentralized way to scale and to have consensus. So now let's talk use cases. Ripple focuses very much on everything TradFi related payments, on tokenization, DeFi for banks kind of thing, uh, not so much uh, for the DGEN stuff. And um, one of the key aspects that it wants to implement is like uh, green finance tracking and CBDCs. It is actually working with China and other countries in BRICS right now on developing a CBDC potentially that could be fully transparent and globally used. I would keep an eye on how that piece of news develops. Overall, it's very institutional, um, very bank aligned. Coin Network is literally the opposite of that. Its main goal is to replace the banking system and uh, to be able to function completely non-reliant on that. So if you have a miner and you can mine Quai with a GPU, then you don't need to get outside of the crypto ecosystem. So you mine Quai, with that Quai, it is EVM, you can build all the DeFi, all the NFTs on there. It could be your, you know, all the applications on there that you need for banking. And then you have the stable coin-like alternative to stables, that is Qi or the energy dollar and you can use this energy dollar as like a stable coin literally but it is not tied to usd instead it is tied to the prices of energy so let's actually talk about tokens a bit more and about tokenomics ripple has pretty typical tokenomics of a hard cap supply of 100 billion ripple or xrp pardon me all 100 billion XRP were pre-mined before it's launched in 2012. And as of 2025, as of July, the circulating supply is about 59 billion. So that leaves uh, 41 billion somewhere and is actually held uh, in the escrow contract by Ripple. So Ripple releases about 1 billion monthly with uh, unsold portions returned to the escrow. So as long as there are buyers, Ripple intends to, you know, release more XRP into the market. But you could critique them that Ripple basically controls the price of the token and the total supply. And the other critique is that there were early allocations that included the team behind, so Ripple itself. So XRP has a capped supply and it is also deflationary. Every time you send XRP, even though the gas fees are very, very tiny, time amount of XRP is burned with these gas fees. So over time, if multiple people send millions of transactions, um, that actually amounts to some meaningful number. 
overall, it's kind of offering predictability for banks because it has been doing this kind of thing for a while and there is capped supply and there is, you know, certain amount of transaction fees that you expect to burn. Um, but at the same time, you only have to trust Ripple that it will continue to exist, that it will continue, you know, upholding to its reputation. So now let's talk about Kwai and we need to spend a bit of time here because there are two tokens, as I've mentioned already a couple of times. So Kwai is a Kwai Network's utility and programmable token that's EVM compatible and designed for smart contracts. It had the initial genesis allocation of 3 billion tokens at launch of February 2025. And there is technically no hard cap supply because there are mining emissions that support the miners securing the network. And these genesis allocations of 3 billion went towards testnet participant, incentives, early advisors and investors, team and the foundation. There is a Kwai foundation. The emission curve here is logarithmic and that means that the Kwai inflation slows significantly over time and that positions Kwai to become a deflationary store of value in practice as the network matures and emissions decline relative to the overall value and usage of the network. And now let's go to the second token, that's Qi or energy dollar, as I mentioned. It is UTXO based cash like token. It is meant to function like a stable coin, so for payments and transactions and like a unit of account. But unlike traditional stable coins that are pegged to USD, Qi isn't backed by fiat or other assets. Instead, its stability is derived from the real world energy spent for proof of work mining of Qi. Proof of work in this sense acts as an oracle for energy values, and you can tie the values of Qi. Uh, to hash. Basically, Qi is worth uh, in terms of hashes instead of in terms of USD. Qi has no initial supply and it is entirely inflationary, so it's similar to other units of accounts type tokens, and it's minted on demand to match the energy costs of mining and network activity. Qi is designed for privacy-focused payments and because of its scalability, fully like real-world commerce. So it would be a big deal for Qi to go ahead and actually become um, the currency of choice at the point of sale. And another cool thing is that it's technically designed perfectly for the compute economy, because if you think about like AI agents and when you run them, you spend money on running the GPUs to run those AI agents for them to do your tasks. So if you'd like to use a currency, you could technically use a currency that also relies on these GPUs. So that would mean you can just use raw compute power or GPU power to get anything done, to including like paying for things, which could be really nice. But again, that's probably very far into the future bit utopian or dystopian, depending on how you look at it. If you want to have like a too long, didn't watch the whole thing summary, Ripple is kind of like, if you cannot defeat your enemy, join them and become their friend. So that's what they're doing with banks. They're trying to work alongside them. They're trying to work within regulatory frameworks to make sure that they stay compliant and that everybody agrees and all the financial institutions like them. Quai Network, on the other hand, tries to be so robust and so, you know, work-based and completely... Um, you know, detached from the banking system so that even if they wanted to shut it down, they wouldn't be able to. That's the whole idea of proof of work and, you know, actual cryptocurrency. So the cypherpunk crypto native ethos versus institutional ethos, depending on which one you prefer. Oh, okay. Oh, there is a plastic bag flying. Let me know if either Kwai or XRP hit a new all-time high by the time this video comes out. Would be interesting to look at it. Um, but also let me know whether you really prefer like proof of work or, and, uh, you know, decentralization you really value it or whether you don't really care and you treat crypto more like an investment asset. And as long as the number goes up, you don't really care. Um, I'm sure there are different philosophies. You, neither of them is wrong, I guess. It's just completely different uh, attitudes and uh, treatments of crypto. So I'd be curious to know that. Uh, but that's it for this video. I have another one prepped where I would like to discuss uh, with AIs, with the most advanced AI models of what they think of the crypto market predictions for 2025. So I asked the eight top eight AI models for their predictions of 2025 and their answers were very interesting. So watch out for the next video that I'm going to be filming a bit later. So thank you very much for watching for this one and see you in the next one.